Hello and welcome to Medu Hub. I am Neha Gupta, a part of our chemistry faculty, and today we will discuss the acidity in carboxylic acids and the effect of substituents on their acidic strengths. To understand this, we need to know why carboxylic acids are acidic. This is because of the presence of an OH group in carboxylic acids. This OH bond is polar because oxygen is electronegative. Hence, it pulls away the electrons and it facilitates the release of a proton. But to understand it better, we need to compare it with alcohols. Why are we comparing it with alcohols? We are doing that because alcohols also possess an OH group, and hence, by virtue of that, they should also be acidic. But which out of the two is more acidic? To understand that better, we need to see how alcohols and carboxylic acids ionize. Let us look at an alcohol first. CH3OH ionizes as CH3O minus and H plus. Now this is called the conjugate base of this alcohol. If this conjugate base is stable, that means this alcohol would like to stay in this ionized state and hence be acidic. So to better understand if a given molecule or a compound is acidic, we need to see the stability of the conjugate base or the anion that is formed upon ionization of that molecule. Here, the negative charge is on oxygen and it is localized. Right? There is no special stability associated with the conjugate base of an alcohol. Let us see what happens in the case of phenol. Phenol ionizes to give this phenoxide ion, which is O minus and an H plus. Now in the case of phenol, the negative charge on oxygen is delocalized due to the presence of this benzene ring here. We can draw the resonating structures to better understand this. Now this negative charge will move here giving a double bond on oxygen and this one will move here to give a negative charge here. We can further make the resonating structures where this negative charge will move here to form a double bond and this double bond will move here on this carbon to give a negative charge and so on and so forth. Hence. Compared to this alkoxide ion, the phenoxide ion is more stable. Hence, if you compare these two alcohols, phenol will be more acidic than methanol, right? This was based on the stability of the respective conjugate bases. Now, if this conjugate base is stable, obviously it would not want to combine back with the proton to give this molecule, right? Now we need to see why it is said that carboxylic acids are more acidic than alcohols. For that, again, we need to look at the conjugate base of the carboxylic acid. This carboxylic acid, acetic acid, dissociates as CH3COO minus and gives a hydronium ion, which is H3O plus, because water here is the solvent. Now, let us look at the stability of this carboxylate ion, which is the conjugate base of this carboxylic acid. This is a resonance hybrid of two structures. O minus and this charge can move here giving us another structure where carbon is attached to O minus here and we get a double bond here. So now what is it that is difference between the two? The difference between these two is that this conjugate base is stabilized by the resonating structures where the negative charge is coming on a more electropositive element. But here, the negative charge is coming on an electronegative element. So this is a better resonance compared to this one. Hence, carboxylic acids are stronger acids than phenols as well as alcohols. So now we understand that carboxylic acids are stronger acids than alcohols. In fact, alcohols are even weaker acids than water. And also, we know how to judge the acidic strength of an acid. So for that, we look at the conjugate base and look at its stability. If it is highly stable, then the reaction will be favored in the forward direction and the release of proton will be facilitated. If it is not stabilized, then it will be a weaker acid. Now let's see what happens if there is a substituent group attached to the carboxylic acid. For example, the substituent group is an electron withdrawing group like a halogen. X. Let me draw a few molecules for you to understand this better. O H. We have another where two halogens are attached. C O O H. 
and a tri-substituted derivative where three halogens are attached on the alpha carbon. Out of these three carboxylic acids, this is the mono-substituted derivative, this is the di-substituted derivative, this is the tri-substituted derivative. Now what happens? A halogen has, is a very highly electronegative element and it has a strong minus I effect. Because of this minus I effect, this halogen will pull away electrons from this group. Let me make the conjugate basis for you to understand this better. I will remove the proton and we get a negative charge on these oxygens. So this halogen present here will pull away the electrons in this direction and here I am drawing two arrows for you to understand the electron density is moving towards halogen which is stabilizing this anion because the negative charge is getting dispersed over the entire molecule. What happens here there are two halogens present. So these two will pull away the electron density simultaneously away from this group and let me draw two arrows for you to understand this better. So more electron density is being pulled away from this group and hence this negative charge is delocalized more compared to this one, right? What happens in the third molecule? Here there are three halogen atoms. So the combined inductive effect of these three pulls away the electron density with more force. I'm drawing three arrows here for you to understand. So more electron density is being pulled away and hence this is further stabilized. So out of these three compounds, this one is the most acidic and this one is the least acidic. You should also know that if a compound is more acidic, it means its acid dissociation constant will be very high. And consequently, its pKa value will be very low because pKa is minus log of Ka. So in case you ever encounter a pKa value, the stronger the acid, the lower will be the pKa value, right? Now let us see what happens if an electron donating group is present. Let us take acetic acid where methyl group is the electron donating group because it has a plus I effect. Let us take a di substituted example. COOH and an example where three methyl groups are attached. COOH. Now again to understand this better, let us make the conjugate basis of all these acids and see if they are more stable or not. We will remove the protons, add a negative charge to oxygen and now look at the stability of these conjugate bases. CH3 has a plus I effect that means it will donate electron density in this direction and intens intensify the charge on these groups. Right? If the negative charge is getting intensified, that means the acidity is further lowered. Here, two CH3 groups are present and they will donate electron density in this direction. Because of these two groups, more electron density is moving this side and this, uh, this conjugate base is further destabilized. In this case, there are three methyl groups and they will simultaneously donate electron density to this group and hence this is further destabilized. What is happening here? This is the most unstable out of the, these three, right? So this one is the most acidic and this one will be the least acidic. So this means that the presence of an electron withdrawing group, electron withdrawing group increases the acidity of a carboxylic acid and the presence of an electron donating group decreases the acidity of, an, of a carboxylic acid. Now we need to see is this same thing possible in aryl carboxylic acids and their derivatives. Let us start with benzoic acid. If we compare benzoic acid to say acetic acid, in acetic acid, the carboxylic group is directly attached to an sp3 carbon. But here in benzoic acid, the COOH group is attached to a carbon which is sp2 hybridized. An sp2 hybridized carbon is more electronegative and hence it will pull away the electron density from this group and consequently the release of a proton will be favored in benzoic acid compared to acetic acid. This means that benzoic acid is a stronger acid. Now what happens if there are substituents present on this? 
let's say we have paramethoxy benzoic acid and one more compound that is say para nitrobenzoic acid we know that ethoxy methoxy group OCH3 is an electron releasing group this group because of the presence of lone pairs on electrons will release electron density in this direction and hence intensify the negative charge on the conjugate base of this acid hence it will destabilize this right in the case of NO2 we know that NO2 is an electron withdrawing group because it is an electron withdrawing group it will pull away the electron density from the benzene ring as well as this group and help in delocalization of the negative charge that is present on the conjugate base of this acid and hence it will increase the acidity so out of these three we can safely say that this one is the least acidic and this one is the most acidic let us summarize what we learned today first we understood why carboxylic acids are acidic and how do we qualitatively understand if a given carboxylic acid is more acidic than the other one we look at the stability of the conjugate base the one that has a more stable conjugate base will be a stronger acid so we can safely say that this most stable conjugate base comes from the strongest acid we also understood how an electron donating group like CH3 reduces the acidity of a carboxylic acid and how an electron withdrawing group like chlorine increases the acidity of, an car of a carboxylic acid. So that's it for today. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.